Easiest way to check if you're on the right microphone, anyone listening, uh, tap your mic. Right? If you're clipping and you know it, yeah. tap, tap your, your mic. mic. If you hamper me, I'll compete with you. This is episode 335 of the Insert Credit Audio Program, where we grill a panel of video game experts for tasty answers to burning questions under the heat of a horrible buzzer. I'm Alex Jaffe, and one feature I appreciate in text-heavy games is a consultable backlog in case I accidentally skip past the line too fast. Mm. Okay, I'm Frank Cifaldi, and feature that I appreciate in a text-heavy game is the fast-forward button. I think uh, uh, those Metal Gear Solid games have the best fast-forward button uh, of any text-heavy uh, game, even though I guess it's technically more of a, a speech-heavy game that has text in it. But uh, sometimes I just don't want to hear these calls, especially if I played the game already, and I love that sort of instant fast-forward button that it has. Yeah, they do a real good job for a guy who uh, famously just likes writing a lot of material. He makes it easy for you to get through it, doesn't he? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm Tim Rogers, and uh, a feature I appreciate in text-heavy video games. I'm going to say this because I know that if it's possible for someone to say this and be greeted with skepticism. So I'm going to say it. I appreciate a high frame rate when the text scrolls and fills Mm. At a at a very high frame rate, it is uh, much friendlier to the eyes uh, over long periods than if it were at a lower frame rate. I like. I, I can't stand movie credits these days. On oh Earth's yeah, it's, it's rough. jarring as heck, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like it's it's now hyper normal to have a 120 fps screen. Right, most phones have them. Mm -hmm. Most computer monitors have them. So. Watching 24 FPS, 23.97 FPS movie credits is uh, is is wild, especially when they're like slightly too fast. Mm -hmm. So yeah, give me give me 4K 120 FPS. That's what I want in my text heavy video games. Thank you. I'm Brandon Sheffield, and I'm having trouble thinking of something. <laughs> um, there's not that many features. I'll, I'll give I'll throw some stuff out. You you, you like a good typeface. We haven't talked about typefaces. Yeah, font is font is good. Yeah, typeface is good. This 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 will scandalize many, but I, I just I don't care that much about the font. I like I I care a lot when the font is really bad. Mm. Well, then guess what? Hold, I'm going to stop you right there. Sounds like you care. Yeah, I do. I I, I interrogate I do care. that a little further on no, your own terms. It's, it's true. I care some about that. It, I don't want it to be awful, but I think my threshold is uh, is lower. Or higher, I rather. challenge anyone who says, whoever says, I don't mind something, yeah. challenge anyone to consider what if that thing you don't mind were suddenly much better, right? Yeah. Would or much you worse. prefer, would you prefer, well, no, let's leave, leave the much worse out of it. Don't want to put people into a, don't want to make people talking about what they don't mind uh, consider a worse situation. But it's, uh, what if it were much better? Could you prefer something better? I think for for me, I don't know if this really, it's not really a feature, but in a text heavy game, I need cool music to pull me through. Um, I, I don't feel I'm like sure. that's a feature of a text heavy game, but uh, definitely I need the vibes to be completed by the, by excellent music and nice avatars. Um, mm, so, okay. so music is what this I'm This is something that doesn't have voice acting then, it's just text. Yeah, I was, yeah, I guess I was thinking primarily yeah. of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of non-voice acted text i've played a lot of japanese role-playing games and i can tell you that uh i appreciate ones with variable select a uh, selectable message speed oh I like yeah ones where you can press a button to fill the text box that's um, true i like ones where you can press a button to fill the text box and then you have to let go of the button and there's an invisible like 0.3 second or point 0.4 second cool down before you press the button again to move to the next box so you don't accidentally skip uh cooked in there to a lot of these old it's it's just a, a polish aspect of a lot of old jrpgs where you'll encounter yeah it's way too easy to skip to to fill a box and then skip to the next and then some of them you know the designer had people's comfort in mind and uh, i don't always like when there's a sound as the text fills you know but yeah. when it's good, it's good. You know what I mean? I go back and forth on that one. Sometimes 
Sometimes it feels too empty without it. Sometimes it's abrasive. Yeah. It depends on the game and the sound. But I think a low sound is is what I like there. Like a when you're, um, when you're talking to a big dude in land stalker, uh, you get like a lower a lower sound, which is cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. I think I mean, uh, this is basically a topic. Now I'm going to throw a couple more out. Um, yeah, let, yeah. I'm counting this as topic one now. Great. I like uh, since we're talking about JRPGs, especially older ones. Uh, I I prefer a monospace font since we're talking about fonts a little bit. The more you can do to make the reading part seamless and not something that one thinks about, the better. And and I, uh-huh. I think having a nice monospace font just gets the words into my brain uh, a lot quicker. And then another thing I really appreciate is when sentences are always complete on the screen. They do not cut off, but like in the middle, you don't have to button press oh, yeah. to complete a sentence. Um, yeah. I, I really like when scripts do that. I did that myself in the the fan translation of uh, Fantasy Star, the first Fantasy Star. I, I worked really hard. It was it was kind of a fun challenge to make oh, sure the hard, sentences yeah. never cut off with a button press, and I'm, I'm very proud of it. Yeah, uh, I guess a, a feature that's exciting in uh, Final Fantasy VII, the original Final Fantasy VII, which I I, I don't know how often uh, this game gets uh, enough or not enough credit for this, but the text boxes are of wildly variable size. They mm. and they can be positioned anywhere on the screen. Yeah, so it gives it the, some character. Yeah, the translator was able to to choose how big the text box was, which did kind of take some burden off of the translation because there is there's you know nothing like a uh, you know a four out of ten. Super Nintendo JRPG you rented from Blockbuster where you get one word, you get the the uh, the word, uh, you get like one three letter word in a text box by itself, or you uh, because the sentence, the, the uh, a whole paragraph was in the previous one, or you get a sentence that fills the whole text box and then there's just like a period in the second line, you know, there's nothing like that. Uh, but uh, Final Fantasy VII had the boxes were just all over the screen and uh. Sometimes there could be multiple at the same time. And it felt, uh, I recall in 1997 playing that game being like, oh, this is cool. I'm, uh, this is luxurious to have text boxes everywhere instead of just one huge text box at the bottom of the screen that covers half the screen. Yeah, when I was working on the translation for Samurai Showdown 5 Perfect, I can't remember how many characters across you were able to do, but I think it was like 16 like 14 um, or 16 probably yeah but but like the first and last characters got eaten so you had to like space away from them and it got it got really tough with like if a character addressed another character and then you got like you got like Haomaru take every character's name is like 14 almost <laughs> yeah yeah Haomaru yeah. is not that long but like so, some of them you it's just like oh jeez how am I going to fit this? <laughs> so I, I wound up having to hyphenate some things and it was, it was terrible. Like I didn't want to do that, but uh, just sometimes there was no choice with some of these long names. Uh, but I was going to say some, something that I do appreciate, which is a feature is RPG mechanics in these text heavy games, like your Tokyo Meki Memorial or more visually directly, like in Citizen Sleeper, where you have actual dice rolls and you use those to complete actions. Or the the kind of classic example of a neat thing where in that, that one dating sim and then several others uh, also did it. Uh, there was one one character where if you wound up dating someone else, even in another save, they would come across to that new save and be mad at you. That kind of stuff. All those kinds of I know which little... one that is, but I'm not going to spoil it by saying it out loud to preserve the delight for someone in the future to discover. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just, just keep that in the back of your mind anytime you play any dating sim until you yeah, encounter it's it. possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's fun. Because, you know, <laughs> that's... Uh, I mean, that's one of those case, cases of uh, there being a thing that's in the back of somebody's mind while they're playing... Tokimeki Memorial, right? And it's just like, what if she remembers this? And it's like, she doesn't, but it's fun. <laughs> it's yeah. possible. Uh, yeah. Frank, you won last week's episode, which means Oops. you have the honor and privilege of choosing a topic at the top of the show here. Great. Um, I like that you didn't ask me if I, if I have one, uh, like you usually do. <laughs> uh, I'm confident that you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess You're I do. I didn't realize Frank. I did. I didn't realize I did until uh, you interrupted some pre-show banter and said, hey, that sounds like a topic. And I was like, oh, you're right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so as uh, 
eagle-eyed listeners of this show know. I've I've over eagle-eared the past, listeners. Yeah, that was that was a joke, but thanks. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, uh, as 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 eagle uh, orifice uh, listeners are aware, <laughs> I spent a little over a year now in pursuit of uh, the perfect visual representation of what a video game uh, looks like on a CRT. Um, Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. I'm just not satisfied with uh, video capture. I'm not satisfied with any photographs that I've seen of a CRT. Um, As a lot of you know, in in, in this pursuit, I've looked toward uh, strange uh, medical and and film industry devices in order to try to uh, capture this. And as of this morning, uh, I think I'm, I'm very close to perfection uh on on photographing a crt so i'm gonna go into host only chat and i'm gonna go ahead and uh paste in here kill me bro sonic 2 in 4k and Let's i'm not it. sure what i think about it interesting Whoa. interesting That's pretty good it looks similar to my memories of playing sonic 2 this is uh so this is a photo this is a photo of a crt yeah and this is genesis sonic 2 this is Genesis Sonic 2, technically over a mister, but like it's the exact same RGB output. It is RGB as well. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like it's too clean. Like I feel like I've like science has gone too far. <laughs> this looks like an emulator filter to me now. It does look a little like an emulator filter, which is weird because it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> They're really a credit to emulator filters at this point. And I, f- but what's strange to me is I feel like. I feel like I see bending at the corners, but you I do. Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay. CRTs do that. Well, you it could have been a, a flat screen CRT. So oh, I, sure, okay. sure. Those so, didn't uh, exist in 1986, but yes. So the 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 bending is real. Well, that's interesting. Do I like it or don't I? Good question. Yeah. Is there a way to capture it in motion? So you, you want to see it in motion, Alex Jaffe? Yeah. Yeah, I do too. That's going to take some more work. You want to explain your setup, Frank? Sure. This was captured on what's called a film recorder. We have discussed this on the show previously, but yeah. uh, a film recorder is a device that was used in the brief time when uh, that was the, the only way to get graphics off a computer uh, was to photograph it with film. Um, there was no, you know, projecting it or anything like that. Like you, you just had to direct to a monitor, so you had to photograph it. And um, film project, uh, sorry, film recorders are how, you know, the, the, digital imagery and like Tron was put on film, right? Or even if you want to go forward later, like Toy Story would render one frame at a time and then print it to 35 millimeter film. Mm-hmm. Um, the device I'm using is is one of those. It's a film recorder. And essentially the way it works is that there's a black and white, very small CRT and there's a color wheel in front of the CRT and there's a camera pointed at, at the, the color wheel that's pointed at the CRT. And the exposure opens on the camera. And it, it much like um, uh, Technicolor, if you've ever seen how a Technicolor camera works, which, which records the same footage, but three different times with three different colors and overlays it. Same exact concept, but with red, green, and blue, R, G, and B on, on the, the video signal. So uh, this, what you're seeing here is a stacked image of a red, green, and blue photograph uh, of black and white Sonic 2. Um, yeah. and, and the reason I went this route is because I don't believe that a photo of a color CRT looks the way that a human eye sees a CRT. Mm-hmm. I, I think it dulls the colors. I think we don't see the the little like notches in the lines that are the, that's a slot mask. That's that's where color comes from on a CRT. I don't think we perceive those. Yeah. Um, unless we're just putting our face up in the grill, the literal uh, grill, if it's a if it's a Sony. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's why I was trying to go this route because it's a color. It's a fo- it's a color photograph of a CRT without the slot mask notches. So it's just scan lines, but just a little dirty. Yeah, it is interesting to look at because it's simultaneously very clean and also visually noisy because I can see kind of like, uh, not exactly banding, but I can see distinct, you know, li- lighter and darker lines. Yeah. Uh, and and colors that don't exist in the game per se, but my eyes might perceive because of being fooled by a CRT. So it's a it's an interesting in between here. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I I do kind of like it. I think I like it. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel either. I like I was really excited to replicate what I what I considered like a Nintendo Power screenshot and now I feel like I've just kind of made a filtered 
<laughs> I don't know how to dial this back without just like taking it out of focus or something. Yeah, how do I make it worse? Mm-hmm. I think so- something that that also makes it feel staged to me is that uh, in this Sonic Two screenshot, you uh, ha- it's time eleven rings eleven. Mm. Make a wish. It just feels like a uh, score two hundred though. Score two hundred, yeah. It, but somehow it feels feels staged. It's, it's, it's fooling me. The so next step is a 4K video, I guess. We'll figure yeah, it out. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. okay. Here's a personal issue I've got in my craw that maybe you can help me extricate. I've noticed a cavalier trend in entertainment journalism towards what constitutes an Easter egg. Can we lock a definition down for this? Easter egg. Yeah, what is one and what isn't one? Oh, geez. So should we know what the controversy is? Should we know both sides of this debate or should we just make it up? You see a lot of articles from uh, entertainment journalism sites that are like, oh, here are 20 Easter eggs in Do the latest uh, Superman movie. And they're just like references oh, to things. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah now, that, now that we're talking about uh, movies, I, I get that is the problem that people are incorrectly pegging references as Easter eggs? Yeah. Yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. They're they're like Easter egg, um, Jimmy Olsen has a cameo. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> yeah. In the offices of the Daily Planet is a photographer who identifies himself as Jimmy Olsen. This is an yeah. Easter egg for fans of the original comics. So I'm I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna say that in in video games it's pretty clear that an Easter egg is something that you have to as the player go out of your way to find and then it's a, a little surprise reward for having done something complicated and found it there. Uh, so in movies, I think that means an, an Easter egg would be something where, like, in the J.J. Abrams Star Trek, there's a there's like a an R two D two floating in the space debris in one of those Star Treks. If you do a pause frame, that's an Easter egg because like you wouldn't see it unless you really uh, scrutinized yeah. it. After the you could you couldn't really necessarily perceive it in the filmic experience. You'd have to search for it. Yeah, there's there's a moment in the first Avengers movie where someone is playing Galaga on their computer in the big Avengers base, and that's an Easter egg if you're a Galaga fan watching the Avengers. But mm-hmm. three minutes later, when Robert Downey Jr. in quote unquote character as uh, Tony Stark says that guy over there is playing Galaga. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you all no, remember everyone in the theater applauded. That's not an yeah. easter egg anymore. You've de- you've deegified it at that yeah. point, right? You've cracked so I the think, egg. You hatched I think, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've hatched the egg. You're Billy Hatcher now, dog. Uh and it's uh I think the, the I think the true definition uh, for modern times of easter egg lurks like a creep somewhere between those two moments of that first Avengers movie. You see stuff be described as an Easter egg now if it's like a post credit scene, right? It's like, oh, because yeah, you got to stay to the end of the credits. It's like, uh-oh, that almost fits this nebulous definition because yeah, you might get up and leave. You might have to go to the bathroom. Uh, or if, you, you know, if you're hunting for Easter eggs, you might stay there with a painful bladder to see Deadpool tell you to go home. I would like to interrogate Brandon's earlier definition of an Easter egg being something you have to get out of your way to find in a video game. Mm -hmm. How is an Easter egg different from, say, a hidden collectible, like a piece of heart in a Zelda? Uh, Because it's... it's, Deranged in its hiddenness, right? Deranged in its hiddenness and different. It's not just a heart. Like, it's, it's a... So when in Halo 2... Or one, I forget which. I think it's Halo Two, when you could climb up to the top of this mountain and there's like a some uh, Pro Magnon family up there or something. The, uh, it was it's really hard to get there, and those guys aren't anywhere else. That's an Easter egg. That's an Easter egg. Yeah. Okay, but if they gave you an item, is it no longer an Easter egg? Right. No, it still is. He's- it's it, that because because they are un- so there there has to be a unique element to it, in my opinion, a unique or like special. Those are similar words. I have a problem with an Easter egg being something that uh, one might, for example, collect in a 100% speed run. I agree. Of collecting right. all the I items. agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you mean by item. I mean, if they, if they gave you some ammo, 
I would be like, okay. that's still an okay. Easter egg. Yeah. Uh, but if they, if they, if you needed to see them to get an achievement, then it's not an Easter egg anymore. It's part of the game. What about Yoshi on the top of Peach's castle in Super Mario 64? Is that an Easter egg? No, he lays them. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> by virtue right. of the fact that in Super Mario 64, you have a number at the top of the screen that is steadily incrementing as you collect the stars that uh, await you at the end of all of the every significant challenge in the game, uh, each right. of which has a one sentence description or a uh, sentence fragment description on the, the, uh, the entry screen. And uh, there's a cannon that's sealed and then it opens up at the end. It's like that's true. It's like you're you're basically just watching this number count up and then you there's a celebration when you get 120. I don't know. The game is just kind of guiding you toward that. So it's not just about difficulty. It also has to be obscured. Yeah, yeah it's it, you have to right. go through effort to find it. And it's not something that your your average casual player would stumble upon. or it, it, it could be, but it wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be usual. And it should feel like you found it. Not All like right. the game presented it to you, and I feel like in 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 the modern sense uh, th- that people use the word, the the effort aspect is incredibly sorely lacking in motion pictures. It's mm-hmm. it's always mm-hmm. like rubbed in your face pretty hard. Yeah, and it's pretty simple stuff. So I feel like they don't deserve to use the term. They should just use the word reference. Indeed, at that point, I think so too. Here's your next topic. Bethesda has commissioned the three of you to develop your own concept for an experimental vault tech vault in the next Fallout game. I hope they're paying me a lot of money. They're paying you as much money as you want for this hypothetical scenario. I love it. Oh, so we're just designing a a vault? Yeah. I mean, for those unfamiliar with the Fallout series, uh, these vaults were supposedly these bunkers to preserve human life in the wake of a nuclear apocalypse, but each of them has a twisted social experiment in them yeah yeah i mean this is gonna sound like a joke but uh i haven't played every fallout game i've played the first uh, one two four of them so one two three in new vegas i haven't gone past that um oh uh, there aren't any other ones actually I, that's what i that's what i'm uh, my understanding is is yeah. what a certain genre of, of fallout 4 hater would say <laughs> to a certain genre of Fallout 76 hater. Um, <laughs> but what I haven't yeah. seen is uh, a vault where everything works and it's fine and and, and they're actually thriving. I haven't, I haven't seen like a positive vault yet. I think there should be a vault where Liam Neeson is your dad and it's your birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good I idea that would be pretty good that's a, <laughs> pretty good <laughs> crawl around it. yeah goo goo gaga as a text option yeah yeah one where one where everything works would be pretty cool i don't i don't know if i have the uh social engineering chops to devise that place to, to, to create utopia you don't yeah. think yeah i believe that is a fallout 4 vault where like the big surprise is you go in and everyone's pretty happy and oh, well adjusted okay. Yep. Yeah. Wait, I well, have the same idea as Bethesda? Ew, we'll get it to me. <laughs> Twisted social experiment. Okay, everyone's clowns. And they just oh, that's, norm- here we go. Here we <laughs> they go. Just, they just normalize clowns, and then when they get out of the vault, like everybody there has been born as a clown. And, and were they clowns before they got in, or are they clownified when they get in? Uh, it was all clowns. You just said born as a clown. It, yeah, yeah, it was all clowns before. So they in got other in. words, the day the clown cried was <laughs> <Yeah>. the birthday. <laughs> the birthday that, that yeah. was was upon exiting the womb. <laughs> Slapped on the butt <laughs> upon exiting the womb. They were already crying. They were yeah. already cli- crying. And Liam clowns. Neeson was saying, "Yes, my child." That's <laughs> yeah. not Liam Neeson's voice, but I'm not going to try to grow do it. round with food. Of course, at a clown birth, it's like thirty clowns at once. Liam Neeson's particular set of skills involves right. putting a red nose on his face. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so it's all clowns, and they're yeah. all normalizing clowns, and then and then they yeah. get out, and they're like, "There's no clowns here." They don't. They don't even know what what. Th- what they're like n- these aren't people because <laughs> their their faces are bare they're naked they're their going noses, around naked their noses are so strange and fleshy oh man just hundreds of years of grease paint was in that vault just yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah eventually they had to learn how to make more make yeah. a cat oil grease paint right. face stuff and they get out there and they're just like this world is worse than we it could have imagined <laughs> Yeah, the, the only food was custard pies. The only yeah. drinks were pressurized seltzer. Where's the, the joy? The big twist is halfway through the game, you realize you're playing Rage 2. 
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> nice. That's right. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, the big twist uh, at the end is you realize it was just Borderlands. Yeah, all I was going to say. I guess I realized <laughs> that I basically described Borderlands. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody. Yeah, you clown. just invented Mad Moxie. Yep. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I don't know what that means. All right, they've done like cannibalism. They've done like extending life by merging with plants. I think, if I remember right, most nice. of them and most of them end with all the vault dwellers killing each other. Yeah, I think yeah. they've done the lottery. Yeah, they've done. Have that. they done werewolves? I don't think so. Have they done vampires? Oh. Probably vampires. Ooh. Well, they've oh. done like you know mutation stuff, which is basically. Oh, insane. it's a good yeah. day to be a vampire. <laughs> is what the first NPC says when you walk in. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you showed up. But it's not actually because you just threw the door open of the vault and now there's sunlight streaming in. And they're all crispy. I honestly think werewolves in a vault is real funny because there's no moon. Mm. So they don't know until they get out of the vault. Yeah, they have to, they have to, a, a werewolf must bear witness to the full moon in order to transform. It's not like they're sitting around yeah. in their bathtub when the moon rises uh, and they turn into a wolf. They got to go out and look at it. Yeah. Maybe that's the social experiment. They're all convinced that they're werewolves, except they've never seen the moon. Has there ever been one where everyone got their memory wiped every day? So every day they think that it's the first day of the apocalypse? A memento. Vault. No, they haven't done an Adam Sandler's 50 First Dates vault. I actually think they that's an interesting one. Yeah. Um, like like that, that one actually could work of all the ones we've talked yeah. about. Because it, it is, they, they're all experiments, I think to see how they could make people survive and thrive for hundreds of years in a vault, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. I don't know that they've ever done one um, where it's still a fresh idea every day. Yeah, because I was trying to no, think of how, how to make people not turn on each other and stuff. And if they think that, oh God, we got to pull together. If they think that every right. day, they might, might not work. kill each other. Oh, that reminds me of another They'd be really idea. stressed. <laughs> um, like maybe there could be a vault where uh, the scientists... I'll build like a mutant alien creature and and uh, and and put it in New York, and then the world uh, uh, comes together. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. big old yeah. man. <laughs> so my my big vault idea was it's high school. Just everyone thinks they're like they're. It's generations of people raised to believe that all of life is high school. Oh man. And it's just wow. you're just going to high school as a 45 year old. They got lockers to shove nerds into. Oh, they're all dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, good. but that, that that usually fits, right? Like the teachers are robots. Like, you show up, everyone's dead. Yeah. But they're dead holding like rulers or whatever high school people do. <laughs> that's, that's right, <laughs> right. Voice recorders. Yeah you, yeah, you go. Yeah, you go and 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 loot their corpses, and it's like protractors and gum. Oh man, there's an audio log from like a. 76 year old man being like tried to make it with Tammy <laughs> but she and William are still <laughs> yeah that's what I'm talking about uh, that's, that's what I'm talking about and they're studying history and stuff but it's all like AI generated nonsense that doesn't uh, <laughs> that's not real like yeah. none of it is real that's actually just oh, basically going to be Twitter. be real earth in about 20 years is uh, true. yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward Ooh, to it baby. can't wait topical it's true it's true have you seen these these uh, these videos where people are like, this is what the mainstream media won't tell you. And then they have a video referencing newspaper articles and uh, <laughs> websites. Uh, yeah. Well, that's not the mainstream media anymore. <laughs> the mainstream media is Twitter. That's well, right. there's mainstream yeah, that's media it. and there's lame stream media, and it's yeah. important to understand the difference. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't understand because of wokeness. In these, in these dangerous times... That's something for us to consider as we take a quick break. The following ad supports the Insert Credit podcast, but is not necessarily endorsed by its individual members. This is the Insert Credit Quick Break. I'm Alex Jaffe. Are you a transgender or gender non-conforming individual aged 18 years or older? If so, you're invited to participate in a research study conducted by Texas State University researchers 
exploring the experiences of transgender individuals in online gaming spaces. This study aims to gain insights into the relationship between social transition in online gaming environments and real-life transitions among transgender individuals. Possible benefits of this study are to help further our understanding of the challenges and opportunities faced by transgender individuals in the gaming community and to grow the body of academic research into transgender experiences. Participation in this survey is entirely voluntary and anonymous. Your responses will be kept confidential and used solely for research purposes. Additionally, this study has undergone review and received approval from the Texas State University Institutional Review Board. To participate or learn more about the study, please visit tinyurl.com slash S3DRCM4R. That's tinyurl.com slash S3DRCM4R. For any questions about the purposes of this study, contact Esther Key at FHA14 at txstate.edu. This project, 9452, was approved by the Texas State IRB. Pertinent questions or concerns about your rights as a research participant and or research-related injuries should be directed to Research Integrity and Compliance at 512-245-1423 or orsp-irb at txstate.edu. Welcome back to Answer Credit. Uh, it's time for us to go down into Carl's Bad Cavern. Uh, this is the point of the show where I pick a question that was submitted to me at patreon.com slash insert credit, where for just a few dollars a month, you can join up with the many who have sent us join questions up. for us to address on the show. You get extra bonus episodes every month and other fun surprises. Uh, this week's question comes from Isaac, who asks, what video game character would you most want to carry around as a Tamagotchi-style virtual pet? And what would their on-device mini games be like? Oh, God. I, br I briefly thought that this question was like, if that character were a live creature, and I'd have to be responsible for their <laughs> staying alive. I don't, I don't know why. I, I just feel that that part's implied. <laughs> it's a very upsetting By being a Tamagotchi creature, I believe we have to feed them and clean the, clean their uh, poops. Yeah, and yeah. make sure that they don't die. Um, yeah. Man. So not someone you care about. Exactly. Yeah. Mario. Oh, you can't be responsible for for Mario. No, I don't. I I also don't want to clean his poops. <laughs> yeah, I, I let me tell you, living in the uh, the city of Oakland, California, I have scraped human poop off the street in in front of my domicile, and uh, I don't like to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's there's a guy in the apartment building across the street who has a Great Dane, and he walks it exclusively behind my building. Uh-huh, and he just leaves the poops there? He does the dog turd equivalent of dining and dashing. He's on the phone every time, so he's, like, looking at his phone. Yeah. The, the dog is just putting a whole god darn quinceanera birthday cake <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> no. Like, you know, like, talking the whole family and can in, enjoy a slice of this thing. Yeah. You know, I'm talking the extended family. Okay. God, I man. mean, it, it is people, huge. people who, uh, who are just like, I have nobody to blame but myself for picking this. This, this, this is some, this is somebody else's fault. Uh, sorry, sorry, somebody else's problem. Like, who, who, yeah. uh, I, th that kind of a person and I are not going to get along, I don't think. And he lives in the apartment building across the street, uh, whose condos all sold like two years ago for $5 million each. So. Yeah. Um, so this guy lives in a $5 million apartment. Mm -hmm. I watched him walk in there. I wasn't following him or anything. My dog walks a particular route and I just, I saw this and I've seen it like five times. So it's, it's a pattern and I, you'll see the dog's turds, just big old pancake buffet plates just out there. <laughs> and yeah. so if anybody ever needs to know how long it takes, how many days of heat cold or rain must transpire in what sequence or variety in order for a Great Dane's leavings to turn into something a little more palatable to the eye. Um, let me know in the chat below. Um, <laughs> it's uh, somewhere around nine days, I think. It starts to not look exactly like what you have always known it has been from the start. 
um, the grim after image of an evil animal. So about nine days. In the interim, I figured out a character that would yeah. be okay. Scooby Doo. He's a great <laughs> Dane, right? Yeah. Is he? I don't know how great he is. Marmaduke. Oh, Marmaduke's a great Dane for sure. Who would win in a fight, Marmaduke or Scooby Doo? Scooby Duke. Oh, Scooby Doo. S- yeah, Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo's far more agile. He's done he, a lot more. He fights dirty too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's uh he's he's got opposable thumbs somewhere because yeah. he's always yeah. like pulling masks on. He's off teamed and, up with Batman. Yeah. yeah uh, just, anyway, Marmaduke's just an idiot. Yeah. Atomic Robo Kid is just a, a cute little robot, and um, he's not gonna have. He's not gonna die. Die. Right. He's gonna you run can, out you of batteries. You can plug him back in. You can yeah. recharge him. Yeah. Yeah. And and. I was originally going to say Ranger X, but Atomic Robo Kid is. I, I want a, a, a cutie in my in my Tamagotchi scenario. So Atomic Robo Kid is a cuter robot. I M O I R M classic. So uh, that's who I got. I think. I think robot is is the direction for me. Also, I could maybe do like a Mecha Chow. Those those guys. I don't know if those are really robots though. Mecha so uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The end. Anybody else got one? Yeah, Frank. What are, what are you taking care of? What weird little creature and what are the mini games on that device oh uh i don't know i i I feel like uh bonk would look good as a tamagotchi i think he's got a really good sort of silhouette design the big head and stuff he's got the big shiny dome right um feed him meat there's a food that he likes yeah uh there's several foods really Mm -hmm. right like like different levels of foods and meat fruit yeah, yeah, meat, meat, meat yeah, fruit. meat fruit. Yeah, meat fruit. He loves meat fruit. Um, Smiley face food. Doesn't like bread fruit though, just meat fruit because he's on the paleo diet as the joke <laughs> And then nice. mini game. I mean, uh, he gets in a car and it's a three lane racing game. I honestly nice. like. I I finished that sentence. Like, first of all, I, I have this problem <laughs> of finishing sentences in my head at wild speed. So you said he gets in a car accident is what I immediately thought. <laughs> so <laughs> keep in mind, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, I don't say anything when I'm completing a. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you pull it out, and he didn't starve to death, but he got in a car. <laughs> I have this game. <laughs> I have this game where I just I tried to done. He didn't invest enough in his. In his car driving education <laughs> i try to complete a whole new sentence for every word a person reveals of a sentence they're speaking and try to have it have a different meaning every time but that time i hit it with the he gets in a car accident and i was like all right our tamagotchi <laughs> that gets in a car accident that's it that's a whole he doesn't know what a car is he's a caveman yeah. Where, where's he trying to <laughs> go no way he could he's so survived. confused where's he driving to well, we'll never know. My answer is he's a Dragon Quest slime. Uh, if you look at the guy, he pretty much eats what Pac-Man eats. So it's fruits. And his minigame is he jumps rope. So there you yeah. go. I feel like That's, that exists. It doesn't uh, because the people clamor for it every every day. They're, they're crying out in agony because they don't have it. When should one consider playing a game in early access? And when should one avoid it? Wednesdays. I don't touch early access. Sometimes the games are just always early access. I mean, isn't Minecraft basically just early access? Yeah, well, I guess yeah, live service games, it's 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 hard to say if it's early access or simply ongoing. Um I would say the time to play early access is when you are invested in a series and want to uh in some very small way uh help shape it and also uh j- like if you want to get in on the ground floor. Like Baldur's Gate 3 it made sense for people to do early access on that because they wanted it. They were interested in the premise. They liked that D and D. They were willing to go along for the ride, and they they felt their voices heard about certain things. Um, but if you're talking about like uh, I don't know, we could, we considered very briefly doing our racing game, driving game. Oh dear, early access, and then adding the levels and modes and stuff. And that would have been pointless because it's, it was, it's like a basically finished game to which we were adding more content, uh, which it just doesn't, there's, there's no, no interesting input that someone can give. And I would be presenting you with a, an unfinished video game to try to enjoy. And then later it would be finished. Yeah. You're putting the player in a situation where they have every tool at their disposal to feel more important than you. Yeah, exactly. Right. And yeah. that, uh, you know, as a creative individual, does that, is that not a, an intolerable power balance uh, situation? Yeah. <laughs> right. You don't, you don't want that. 
right? No. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. You know, I've got some news that I'm putting in chat, which is that uh, Oh Dear yeah. is in early access. Oh, I'm God, kidding. yeah. So this this is actually a little bit of a problem. <laughs> um, there is. Did you there... know that your game name was an Alan Wake reference when you made the game? Did people not tell you that? Uh, no, they did not. And, oh, uh, shoot. Did, also, when did you learn? Uh, well, um, <laughs> at what, what stage in the, I actually because I mentioned it to you when you mentioned the name of the game and did you just not hear me? I, uh, like, you, I don't remember you saying that. No. Uh, uh well, I, I did. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember you saying that. I, I, I didn't, know. uh, aside from that instance that I don't remember, I didn't find out until like 2021. Shoot. Yeah. That kind of rules though. Yeah. Uh, and then I and then I did ask Remedy, "Hey, would you like to put this game in your game as a mini game?" And they said no. <laughs> they just flat out said no. No, they they didn't say no. They said that would be a very difficult conversation to have, <laughs> which is uh, shoot, which is that's basically, way worse than no. I think it. What is, I think what is the reference? I don't know. Oh, there, there's an arcade game machine in the... Oh, no, there's not a machine. There's a diner called Oh Dear. Yeah, yeah it's the name of like the diner in, in the town, in Alan Wake. As the person that, 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 that accidentally named your game, uh, I feel very uncreative at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's also like uh, like trucker hats that say it and stuff. Um, but yeah, this, this game that is out is like some sort of a multiplayer hunting asynchronous hunting thing oh, yeah. and uh someone put it into our our necrosoft <laughs> discord and we were like uh oh well as long as it doesn't get popular and then it got a little bit popular <laughs> yeah, oh no so, so it's like well, I, I saw it because it was like front pages you gotta kill that guy yeah it's it. it's it's like on it's uh it's it's popular enough and it's you know they they have essentially claimed the oh dear name except that we actually have the the game name on steam since like 2015 so if we ever release it they can't complain because we got the pl- prior art on that it's just going to be very weird and confusing you want to ask them if they want an in-game mini game <laughs> no i do not i don't know who these people are uh, <laughs> hey how how sad will you be if they get sued by remedy and you don't <laughs> i'll be I'll, actually i'd be i'd be i don't think that would make me sad in any in any no, way because lawsuits attract attention and then they change the name of their game and it becomes even more successful yeah yeah because they call it dear friends or whatever yeah yeah dear my friends uh what are we talking about uh, early access. Early access. Yeah. Only, only when it doesn't put the player in a. Oh wait. When should you play as a player? Uh, when you yeah. want to. When you want to put yourself in a position that's higher than the developer and the, and uh, and whine at them constantly for features that they that would only take um, five minutes to implement, like uh, massive multiplayer. And then uh, when the game is out and it wins game of the year uh, at uh, Jeff Keighley's uh, Big Boy Pants Awards. Jeff Keeley's uh, low waisted tuxedo tr- uh, trousers <laughs> awards. Uh, you can then uh, uh, just uh, elbow jab your wife like this and go, that guy right there liked one of my comments on the early access forums. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is pretty much down to me that they won this yeah. award. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, that's when you get in. So I'm going to tell you something about early access and me is. Uh, I've I've done some early access games. I've played a couple of them. If something looks weird and fun. So here are my rules for early access. Number one, if a person you know outside of social media, outside of uh, the internet, just a real life person, mentions a game, says it's multiplayer, and says it's fun, and asks if you want to play it, that's an example of checking out early access. That's number one. Sure. Num- and number two thing I have to say about early access is uh, the more interested in a game... I am, that's early access, the absolutely less likely I am to play it. So Agreed. Baldur's mm-hmm. Gate 3 didn't even exist for me. And it wasn't until after playing Baldur's Gate 3 that I looked into what the early access situation was. And I thought, wow, that's pretty neat. They just gave people the whole first act of the game and let and uh, let them watch it get iterated on in real time and actually did kind of meaningfully incorporate feedback and uh, uh, rewrite and tweak and uh, just kind of redesign stuff with regards to uh, the way people were talking about it. 
sometimes directly influenced, sometimes being surreptitious. It, it seems like they had a really, really great early access time there. So, I don't know. Learn what Baldur's Gate 3's early access was, and then if that appeals to you, next time you spot a situation like that, maybe check it out as well, as I would say. All right. Uh, I know that we need to move on, but I have another kind of interesting example here, which wasn't exa- it wasn't quite early access, but it was a game released by someone that you and I uh, both know, Tim, um, where it was released as a... It wasn't exactly free to play, but it had a lot of cosmetic purchases. It had a lot of things you could buy. I like those. And uh, they got a lot of hate from people who just find when when there are games that have stores in them and get mad and they found that people weren't buying as much stuff as they wanted and so they took a gamble and removed the store entirely and put all of the cosmetic things behind like achievement style objectives and they got like a huge round of news articles and Twitch streams and YouTube videos about how this developer had removed all the free-to-play aspects and how it was amazing. And it actually, like, saved the game for a few months that they did that. It was, that was very interesting. And yeah, and then, and then, you know, then it was, it was, it was off, but it, it, it did enough to keep the, the studio surviving until they could do their next thing, which was, uh, I don't know, that was a really curious scenario so uh, i thought i would mention it at the end interesting i also like to think that the guy who invented early access is a titled uh is is landed gentry in england whose uh, title is uh the earl of access <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> there we go earl of access it's spelled spelled a k s uh uh e or s s the earl of access earl of access Last thing I want to ask before the lightning round. Uh, Keanu Reeves is going to be Shattered the Hedgehog. Isn't yeah. that pretty cool? Yeah, yeah. it's not bad. So, yeah. uh, there are, I guess multiple sources theoretically have uh, confirmed it to Variety, but I, I do think it's uh, funny that the only source that any of these websites cite is one guy who has a YouTube channel who said that it was Keanu Reeves. It might be true. <laughs> well, I mean, that's because uh, any everywhere else is the lame stream media. That's right. Yeah, right. The lame stream and, media. Uh, the Doesn't guy with the YouTube us. channel, is uh, he's just telling the truth. Yeah. And he's telling it like it is, which is uh, yeah. Keanu Reeves. Is, right. we, we don't have to dwell on that. A shit. lot of the time, telling it like it is it involves telling it how you wish it was. Right? Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, you know, as time, as time fades, as it, as it, as it recedes into the rear view, um, uh, it just, it really was cool that Keanu Reeves was in that cyberpunk game. Um, he was really good in there and they made really good Your use of him day. and the character was interesting and it was a meaningful twist on sorts of characters he's done before. And, uh, I don't know, he seemed to be having a great time embodying this particular character and it was just, uh, it was a fun little piece of science fiction. And the fact that Knuckles was in the DLC for Cyberpunk 2077, they added Knuckles. Did y'all know this? Yeah, no. they added Knuckles. Oh, yeah, Cyberpunk and Knuckles. Yeah, is that real? Yeah, they, uh, Idris Elba is the is the star of the DLC for Cyberpunk: Phantom Liberty. Oh, Idris Elba's okay. in there, okay. oh. so I, I, he's Knuckles, right? He, he yeah, used to be Stringer Bell, but he's Knuckles these days. He's Knuckles yeah. now. Right. Yeah, he's not James oh, Bond. Yeah. He's Knuckles. I could have believed they put actual Knuckles in there. if, uh, if the, With the amount I've been paying attention, I could have believed Yeah, it. I mean, I think it would actually be pretty cool if they put Sonic the Hedgehog in there. <laughs> yeah. A Sonic the Hedgehog-related side quest or whatever. Sure. Like like he's like a Night real... Night City Zone. I was going to say Cyber the Hedgehog, but that's a whole other thing. Cybronic the Hedgehog. Yeah. That's my plans after the recording ends, yeah. <laughs> You're going to Cyber the Hedgehog. <laughs> I got to go yeah. Cyber the Hedgehog, boys, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, it's it's interesting to have Keanu as uh, the Shadow of the Hedgehog, if only because Keanu's like sixty years old, and Idris Elba's like fifty five years old, and the Sonic the Hedgehog guy is uh, he's in his thirties, right? Like there was this Ninja Turtles movie that came out last year where all of the Ninja Turtles were played by like actual fourteen year olds, yeah, and they were characterized as such, right? Did y'all know about this? Nope. Y'all didn't see this. Yeah, I, I, I watched the trailer. You're aware of it. I watched the trailer. Yeah. And uh, it, it makes sense as I'm replaying the audio 
uh, from my memory banks that uh, those are actual kids. Yeah, yeah. It's like, is it why? Why can't? Why is Sonic got to be some some old guy, John Ralphio looking dude? Uh, looks like uh, John Ralphio. <laughs> um, that's a Parks and Recreation reference. That's the it name is. of his character. In Parks it is Recreation. the name of his character. I, I didn't mean to let people know I've seen all of Parks and Recreation. <laughs> I didn't mean to let that yeah. knowledge out on the show. I've seen all of that show. Who cares? I don't like I it. I will say, Whatever. From, from my memories of Sonic Adventure 2, uh, Shadow the Hedgehog is in his 50s. So in this specific case, I think it's okay. Also, yeah. I'm just generally in favor of Keanu being in stuff. Why not? Put him in there. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's a fucking Get him dude. into it. As long as he wants to Brandon, do it. Brandon, did you see John Wick 4? You know, I still have not because oh, I decided well, that I was going to rewatch the first three first. Oh, yeah. And I haven't gotten around to it. That's a good time. Oh, yeah. You got to get the lore. Yeah. 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 They're all, they're all, <laughs> there is a lot of lore in that show. Wait, have you not seen John Wick, Frank Cifaldi? The, I've the, seen all four of them. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought you were making a, there a is joke a lot of about lore. people who talk about the lore. The lore doesn't matter, is what uh, is the joke. Uh, the, yeah, the, yeah. Well, that's, the, that's fair. Uh, there's, okay. there's more than enough uh, set up in the first 30 seconds for you to understand. That is true. Because okay, yeah. I, I, I remember. It is fun to rewatch them, though. I remember John Wick 3 ending with like a. But something's going to happen. And so because I remembered that, I felt like yeah. uh, maybe I need to remember what that thing is. <laughs> There's a whole lot of a happening something in John Wick 4. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll just I will say John straight. Wick 4 is like three hours long. Right. Um, so it's a big boy. That's that's also been the problem lately. Yeah. Uh, I think block it's, of time. I think it's fine. To be three hours for that movie. Um, I know a lot of people who complained about it. Uh, no, I, I don't complain about that. I just complained about how much time I have uh, in oh, an yeah, evening, yeah. unfortunately. Because I want to be able to like watch the whole thing. I don't want to have to watch pause it one, yeah. and uh, watch the rest tomorrow. The movie theater was really good for that because we went to uh, we just went to the theater and watched it and had a, had a smoke. Uh, it was pretty good. Um, it was only in the theater for like a, like two weeks here in New York, which was very <laughs> insulting. Did any of you have a have a have a grandma or a grandpa who uh who who called it the picture show or or say uh, go to the pictures? No, Ooh. I had. I never had a single conversation with any of my grandparents. That's like, fair. Uh, not anything resembling a civilized conversation. My grandfather gave me a dollar. I saw Kazam with my bubby in an empty theater. Did she say let's go to the pictures? Because that's what my no, grandma. She said the movies. See, yeah, my my grandparents did not say pictures. No. Uh, that that's that's one that I uh, I've kept kept inside. I like that one uh, for someone yeah. to say. Uh, let's let's go to the pictures. Let's go to the picture show. Everybody knows that Martin Scorsese calls them pictures. So that's uh, one yeah. point for Martin Scorsese there. Yep. It's a wonderful right. picture. It's about time to get to our lightning round. This week, I'm bringing back one of our listeners' favorite games, which I'm debuting under a new title that I'm calling Unpopular Demand. Previously on Insert Credit, this was an episode you weren't on, Tim, I had us play a game where you had to name a video game which had the lowest number of fan fictions to its name without hitting zero. Oh, right. A zero fan fiction game would give you a penalty score of 100 points. And the person with the lowest combined score after four rounds would be our winner. And I lost so ridiculously. Yeah, Brandon, you were doing so, so well until so you lost foolish. it all on like Parappa the Rapper, I think. Yeah, and I and I was going to choose Bonk and then someone else did. And I would have. Yeah, Bonk would have won it for you. It was it was a really intense game. What a and fool. Well, it won't be as intense this time, I can promise. Well, because I'm going to fail harder. How many fan fictions are there for Bonk? There was like two. Well... We're not doing fan fiction this time. This time, we're going over to speedrun.com, and instead of fan fictions, you want to name a game with as few active players trying to speedrun the game as possible oh. without naming a completely dead game. Yeah. Uh, what Define dead. Uh, a, a dead game is a game that has no active runners. What does active mean? Uh, that they're currently working on attempts to break a record. That's tracked? Like speedrun.com says? Yes, speedrun.com tracks that. Oh. It's a community. For tool-assisted speedruns, it's like, I, I'm sure there are some people that are doing it off in obscurity, but there are people submitting uh, work-in-progress stuff, and it is sure. and, and it is very uh, communal. Like, when you read the notes, it's like, so-and-so found this trick, which I then incorporated. Yeah. Yeah, I just I thought speedrun was just a leaderboard of completed runs. I didn't realize that there was some mm. way of tracking things that are actively being worked on. Yeah. yeah. For example, the game Ultra Kill currently has 975 active speedrunners. Don't like it. Wow. 
That's a lot. I didn't mean to say I don't like it. I don't know why. All right. Uh, Tim, you weren't here last time, so I'll let you go last. Uh, Brandon, you got the closest to winning last time, so you're going to go first. I. I'm going to say. <sighs> Hold on a moment here. I need to gather my thoughts. I'm going to. Oh, what? God, what's it called? Uh, I'm going to say Night Stalker for the Intellivision. Okay. You can't complete Night Stalker. Uh, pe- people make, they'll do like, a, you know, the, the first loop or whatever. Okay, Jeff, you can make the determination if this is a valid. Let me see Night Stalker. Uh, there are no active runners on Night Stalker. Oh, Brandon's straight loser. He's dead. He's dead. Okay, He's but are dead. there are there run categories? Uh, oh, yeah. Is, is there a run category? Yes, there are run categories. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, okay. Current, the current record holder is Bald Nate who said it uh, six years ago. So there have been no new runs on Night Stalker for the past six years. What was the category? Fastest. Fastest. It's what? Fastest what? Yeah, it's probably for the first loop. So this is this is where I have actually um, screwed myself over because I know that there is somebody who is going through all of the Intellivision games that are on that, like, Intellivision on a chip that is actually the NES Someone's going through all of those right now, and I thought Night Stalker might be on there, and he might be the only person doing it. And so I was going to be like so right, but instead I was so wrong. No, mm-hmm. you, you flew too close to the sun, Brandon. Yep. Frank, yep. you're next. Uh, I don't know where this came from, but uh, the Lone Ranger on the NES. Very good. Ooh, show Very me good the Lone Ranger. Dead game. Last run was five years ago. What? Yeah. That's very surprising to me. That seems like a great speedrun game. Okay, so we've had Night Stalker. We've had Lone Ranger. I'm going to try yeah. to pick one that actually has some speedruns that I feel pretty confident about that uh, just has a name that sounds similar to Night Stalker and uh, Lone, Lone Ranger. Ranger. So I'm going to say Dark Savior. All right, show me Dark Savior. The great Con Naito game. That would be cool if someone were. People are doing, having There's a hard definitely time. speed runs for that. There's got there to be. are. But people don't do a, a lot of um, Saturn still. There's so many categories I could think of, obviously, for Dark Savior and Certainly. subcategories. And Certainly. I don't think there is one. Wait, I, really? I don't, no, there are no runs for Dark Savior at all. Yeah, Saturn Saturn is really low. That like yeah. the yeah there the, was there was one run eleven years ago. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's really you kidding? Th- that's it's it. interesting because uh, I recently went on the record. Uh, as saying that the kids are all really cool, but <laughs> turns out <laughs> yeah. they absolutely not. Gonna have to retract. Yeah. There's statement. not a single god darn cool kid out there. Um, burn it down. Thank you. Um, well, at least uh, we're all we're all on an even playing field now. Yeah, we're all on an even <laughs> playing field. Here. We all got zero. Okay. Um, I am going to go with this. There's probably too many, but I'm gonna say Sonic R. Sonic R. It's, oh, it's going to be at least five. Uh, yeah, uh, Sonic R has uh, 292 players. All so right, that's, uh, that's, you, that's a lot more you, than I thought. But you screwed yourself. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. We'll Unless see. Unless we all just get zeros. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to... Wait, how much does zero uh, confer? 100. 100, okay. So you would have been better off saying, uh, oh, dear. Mm. <laughs> oh, burn. Um... <laughs> Well, no, nobody has it, so they're not. I mean, nobody can yeah, have exactly. it right now, so they're not allowed. Okay, um, yeah. okay. I'm gonna stick with the NES. Uh, show me Panic Restaurant. No, hold on, hold on. I want to go back. Uh, Brandon, there are 292 yeah. total players, but only 13 active players. See, that's what I thought. There we go. There. That's okay. what I thought. Yeah. Okay. That's smoke. Right. Yeah. yeah. There we go. That's All good. right, Franco, was yours? Panic Restaurant. A Panic Restaurant. Or as they call it in Japan, Doki Doki Restaurant. Uh, That's right. There are three active players of Panic oh. Restaurant. Wow, nice. Oh. Panic Restaurant. All right. And I just thought of one, and then it was like, oh, that game's way too cool. Like, clearly, there's kids smoking it, like, nightly. I want to try to pick, like, a like a big, long JRPG. Um, uh, Paladin's Quest for the Super Nintendo. Let's do it. Show me Paladin's there's Quest. There's got to be one, one idiot is probably working on it. Two there idiots are zero idiots currently. Oh, working there's got to be two idiots who are working no, on the it. The last guess one just, was five years ago. They're keeping it quiet in a, in a Discord. They're not. They're not posting about it. That's what it really is. Okay, we're halfway through. Brandon, uh, you're up. 
Oh, right. The score is currently Brandon 113, Frank 103, Tim 200. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I, I, I tend to think... So something you can rely on is that someone's always doing a Castlevania. So I was trying to think, like, what's the, what's the least likely Castlevania for people to be doing too many of? But that's probably still too many. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can, I, I would think all of them are pretty pretty sewn up right now yeah yeah well so that and that's the other thing is like maybe people have done it enough that there's only a couple people working on it now uh so it could go either way um and so i'm gonna not do it (laughs) entirely and i will switch to show me ah this might be a zero but ragna senti crusader of senti all right the game's a smoke Depending on the name, the the name, right, whatever. Show I don't me know. Crusader of Senti. I think it's probably more likely for it to have uh, speedrunners than Dark Savior. So there we'll is out. one active speedrunner. Yes. Uh, a Crusader of Senti. Yes. Uh, Frank, I have a big surprise for you. I had to go back and recheck my Lone Ranger figures. There is also one person currently speedrunning oh, Lone Ranger oh, and speedrun okay. back up. So, so you Ray. have a score of four now. Frank wins. Right? <laughs> All right. Uh, Well, you're next, Frank. Well, I might get a zero here. Um, Please do. But uh, that's that's not the Jeopardy. That's not the final Jeopardy uh, uh, strategy, is it? No. And there's one more round after this. Yeah. All right. Um, Okay. I'm going to get I'm going to steal Brandon's uh, uh, premise here. Mm -hmm. Show me Kid Dracula on the Game Boy. Nice. Show me Kid Dracula. Zero. One person currently speedrunning Kid Dracula. Wow. Frank, you're still in single digits. Am I 1-1? One, one? No. What was my last one? It was 3? It was 3-1-1. One, one. Okay. Or 1-3-1. One, one. Tim, mm-hmm. you're up. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking, though. Uh, go to Moby Games and pick a random game. I'll well say that's it. Let's, 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 throw a, let's throw an <laughs> I don't care Hail Mary. Let's do it. I'm doing I, it. I'd really like you to care at least 1% about this. The, the, I think the 1% is he's looking it up. I do yeah. not. I Yeah, I mean, that's actually more than 1%, I would say. I yeah. I don't follow this stuff. It's not my area of, of interest. I like Mario speed running, but I don't I don't follow any of this stuff to be uh, any kind of an authority on any level. Shoot! Oh, how about D2 for a Sega Dreamcast? Let's do it. Oh, that's a good one. All right. Show me D2 for the Sega Dreamcast. That's another zero. Oh, it's another zero. Really? Yeah, last speed run was a year ago. It's trending on Moby Games. Total players three, active uh, players I, zero. I wonder why it's trending on Moby Games. Somebody is really because in, someone looked at it five minutes ago. Yeah, yeah why, the same reason why. that uh, that picture that you showed us two weeks in a row of that one developer whose name escapes me the second was trending on Moby Games after we talked about it on the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, do it, Charles. I don't want to do it. All right, last round. Brandon, you got 114. Frank, you got yeah, five. Well, Tim, you got 300. Yeah, I, I pretty much lose. So, uh... Frank could really blow it. No. Well, yeah, I guess he would have to, he'd have to really blow it. All right, let's see what's a fun one to do. There's shooters. I don't really like those because... It's either a high score or a play around, and they and and they they just can't make them go fast. But that does mean fewer people do them. Um, so I'll say blazing lasers. Show me blazing lasers. Yeah, there's gonna be zero on that. That's yeah, a zero. Yep. Last speed run was two years ago. Uh, Brandon, you're up to two fourteen. People don't have turbo graphics. Yeah. So that's why. Turbo graphics. Frank, you have a chance to end the game with a sub 10 score. Let's see if we can do this. If I do a zero, I still win, I guess, right? Yeah, if you do a zero, you still win. Oh, okay. I was trying to make this interesting. But we are trying to make history here by uh, ending the game with a score below 10. Okay, okay. So I shouldn't try to make it interesting with like a gamble that might give me a zero. I should try to I should try to get a sub 10. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're going for the perfect game here. Well, a perfect game would be a score of four. What do I have? Five? You have five. So I need five or less. Mm hmm. Four okay, or less. Okay, man. Um, okay. Five or less. Bonk's Adventure on the NES. Mmm. Bonk's Adventure on the NES has one active player. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Oh my God, Frank, how did you get that? 
I'm just good at this. It's good at spawn. <laughs> Do you have like a secret method you're using? No, I'm just thinking about like the kinds of games that people like to speed run and they like these like easy platformers and they tend to favor the yeah. NES. Uh, so that's yeah. where I was going. You're a hundred percent right. Uh, and then I went Kid Dracula because uh, I was stealing Brandon's Castlevania obscurity idea. And yeah. I figured that was the obscure game uh, in that series that people probably uh, like speedrunning but don't have a very active community around. Well, that was your path to victory. Congratulations. Jeff, you can ask how many uh, people uh, are speedrunning Rondo of Blood for the for the PC Engine right now. I was thinking of that one, and I'm 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 very curious how many people... Cause I Five. Th- okay, I was going to say, I think it'll be more than zero. That would have been a good yeah. one for me to choose. Dad Gummit. Yeah, it's a somewhat yeah, that- popular. Uh, I've seen some of that. Yeah. I follow a couple guys on Twitter who speedrun Castlevania Bloodlines, but for reasons unrelated to speedrunning. Yes, currently the top five most active speedrun games are Ultra Kill, Celeste, uh, Roblox Tower Defense Simulator, Lethal Company, and Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64. Yeah, I knew Mario, I knew Mario was still going to be up there. People yeah, are really s- still they trying to, to do them old ones. So for my for my last one, I'm going to say Kickmaster for the NES by Taito because it's also sort of a yeah. It's an NES game and it's a mm-hmm. uh, somewhat Castlevania like and it's uh, underappreciated, but I'm sure that people who love it are out there and at least one person's got to be speedrunning it. Yeah, I'm with you. If we had like ten rounds, I think I would have gotten to that one too. You I'm got it. Kid that Master. is a game with one active speedrunner. Boom. Oh, shoot. Who are they? I got the strat, man. I got the strat for this game. <laughs> yeah, you, you got it down. I, I don't know who it is. I just know there is one. Well, call them up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the Kickmaster himself. Yeah, the Kickmaster. Yeah, find Master. their Discord, do a Discord call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Oh, I believe it's a Smart Alec 24 from the United States is the active yeah, Kickmaster. I've been there. The guy sounds yeah. like a jerk. <laughs> so that's fair uh, it's not someone i'm friends with on discord so i can't sounds like him. he'd try to talk back if we uh, talk to him yeah anyone got any recommendations this week i actually do not <laughs> this week i got nothing sorry oh, that's interesting because i've got something this week oh good the other day i was in the philippines and i happened upon this beautiful vhs tape um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um None of you can have it, uh, and I won't tell you what it is, but uh, I recommend you find it. Is it, it Balawis? This is a Filipino VHS tape uh, horror film that I happen to have within arm's reach. Oh, very good. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I'd like a Filipino VHS tape. <laughs> Just you walk in, and then, you know, I get this, uh, uh, sir, this is a Thai restaurant, is what the guy said to me. Yeah. So it's my complex joke there. Does Frank have any recommendations? Um, I mean, I'll just vocalize that I think this Fallout show is pretty good. Um, oh, yeah, I, I think it's it. I think it's pretty neat that they made a show that actually feels like playing the game. Um, in that I can kind of visualize all the speech checks that happen in conversations. Like, I like each char- each of the main characters in that game. Like, I can kind of see what the build would be for them. You know, I, I think they actually thought about the show in those terms. Uh, I, th- I think all of the That's characters neat. in this in the show are, you know, built RB- RPG characters with stats. That's neat. I think that it's really interesting that this uh, is a show where the lead characters have like a main objective, a MacGuffin sort of thing that they're doing, but they keep getting sidetracked by side quests mm. and it's even kind of called out. Um, I, I, I think all of this is kind of new for a video game adaptation that it feels like a video game and they have to do video game stuff. Yeah. We are starting to get to the point where the people making like s- static media, like TV shows and, and movies about video games cannot help but have been raised playing video games. Yeah. So like we're, we're actually yeah. getting to the era where the people making them have heard of them before starting it, which is, well, is not just heard of them. Like we're, we're in an era where they respect them, you know? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. Not just have heard of, but actively respect. Cause in the, in the old days, it was definitely like, you want me to make a Mario? I don't know what that is. I think it'd be more interesting if, uh, yeah, this backstory. Yeah. 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 Yeah, dude. I'm going to smoke that Fallout show. I, I was uh, I was I was traveling last week um 
in the Philippines, and you no, were uh, oh. in uh, Central Virginia and Malaysia, and you found a beautiful Filipino VHS tape there. <laughs> yeah, that had floated across the ocean. I, I was in Central Virginia doing a, a pickup uh, for the foundation's archives. Um, I've uh, been there. Pretty cool stuff. It's actually stuff um, from this guy, Dave Marsh, who uh, owns ICOM Simulations. He was also the art director there. Oh, and nice. Among other things, we have the Macintosh that he drew, like Shadowgate and Deja Vu on, which I think is pretty neat. I was going to um, bring up Shadowgate during the speedrun segment, but I'm sure just because it seems like a stupid game. It's all run. menuing. I don't know if people like that. You know, they like, they like platforming. Two active it's, players. I just looked it up. There, wow. there was Good just job. a Shadowgate Mega Drive uh, tool assisted speed run that I watched last week. That gets on the Mega Drive. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so in the music sounds so buttholy. It does. I didn't know Shadow. I'm just kidding. Mega. I'm just kidding. I don't know. It's on there. It does. It, the music does sound pretty bad. Yeah. They, Have it, you ever wanted to play a video game real bad on the Mega Drive just so the music sounded like a robot's butthole? Sometimes. <laughs> if so, check out Subterranea Solar Jetman fans in the chat. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Shadowgate is not on the Mega Drive. What am, what am I what am I thinking of? What's that other one? Shadow Boy, I think. <laughs> Shadow Boy. God I have darn no it. idea what you're thinking of. Shadowgate, point and click adventure. Yeah, I'm 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 not thinking of Shadowgate. I'm thinking of I'll 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 get it while you're talking. One you. active player for Shadowgate 64. Nice. Um. Well, what I was gonna say is that uh, I was Shadowrun. <laughs> Shadow run, sure. Shadow run, sorry. Seen at a restaurant, pretty nice little restaurant in uh, central Virginia, Charlottesville, Virginia. Oh, that's where the front line is in the uh, the new Civil War. A few God. tables away, just, you know, <laughs> a group, like uh, two generations of a family, you know, um, but it's, it's like spouses were there and stuff too. And, and uh, just regular folk in central Virginia talking about this fallout show and then also like comparing it to the the last of us show and the older gentleman i would say in his 60s what who had clearly been watching the fallout show was asking questions of the people in their probably 30s or 40s uh was this in the original games and they were able to answer the question it's just like normal folks having conversations like that that's interesting feels pretty new yeah, for yeah, sure. Kind of rules, and and I don't know. Like this is complicated because I, I don't I don't want to I, I don't want to come across as saying that uh, you know video games aren't mainstream or whatever. But this is kind of a new kind of mainstream discussing uh, the worlds that came from video games, and 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 I feel like we're actually in a new place, and it's it's neat to see because I think all of us are old enough to remember when this was just kind of weird person stuff. When yeah. video games were were a freak thing, you had to hide actively from hot girls. Or yeah. you would be killed in public. Or at least you, or at least you felt yeah. like you had to, right? Yeah. Like, like, like we're at least from that era. We're from the era where, like, I don't know. Even when I got in this industry twenty years ago or whatever, like, it felt really bizarre and interesting. If I don't know, Target had a T-shirt with Mario on it. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. wow, that's that's a sign of something. And, and yeah, it just we, we we've kind of come a long way in the last twenty years. Now you can't avoid Mario at at uh, Target. It's, yeah, it's all he over just the jumps place. on you as soon as you get in there. I actually had one talking about old people uh, made me remember another thing, which is you're going to recommend old people. I'm going to recommend old people. No, I'm actually going to recommend experiences curated for older persons mm. because I went to see Bob James, the um, light jazz jazz fusion artist who is uh, still performing, and I I saw him at the Blue Note Napa which uh -huh. is a venue that seats 183 people. 183 or wine country friends. Wine country friends. And the experience of going there, because it's, it's in wine country, it's music for old people, it was very pleasant because the doors opened right on time. Right oh, on yeah. time. <laughs> There's a whole, a whole god darn burlap sack full of hate to break it to you as regarding this, but keep going. Okay. As you got inside, you didn't need your QR code or whatever. Uh, <laughs> they just asked for your name, like yeah. in the olden times, and you could just go in there. Whole big old potato sack full of hate to break it to you. All the seats, by the way, had a great view of the stage. You get to the table, and there's an app that doesn't load up on your phone super well. And then someone comes by and says, oh, we have a paper menu as well. Oh, uh, yeah. And then just takes your order like the regular way. That was pretty neat. <laughs> it just made me remember uh, what it was like before you had to get all that 
nonsense going for you but uh, i'm sure it's like that in a lot of the country yeah well no i mean the 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 hate to break it to you here is it's just uh it's it's you know a clippy popping up in the corner good old clippy it's like it sounds like you uh you uh you might be considering getting old oh yeah uh, oh for sure yeah no right? i that, so it's uh, that's that's what i'm that's what i'm recommending oh, yeah. i'm recommending yeah. while i was there in the bathroom, I had a conversation with several gentlemen who uh, who enjoyed the show, and we were. Uh, and, and one guy was like, "Come, come uh, to my my boutique hotel. You can stay for free because you liked this. I don't know. Every, just like a bunch of that owns for, forty five to sixty five year old fellows in the bathroom uh, who enjoyed the show. Uh, it, it, That's how they do it. It's uh, it's the good time. So I recommend. Uh, getting old and then going to a place that's curated for old people uh, to experience with minimum friction because uh, it's it's the way to still have a good time. The end. There's just a certain point in uh, most white dudes' life where you're like, you know what, golf uh, seems kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, just hitting the ball by itself is pretty fun. Although I will also say going to a going to a jazz show for old people meant that uh oh yeah that I, I was in the presence of of uh, a great variety of um ages and uh ethnicities oh, and and hangoutishnesses so that was nice. Yeah. Also I kind of recommend Bob James. He's he's got a new album from last year. Uh most of the songs on it are pretty good. If you like that sort of music, give it a look. It's called Jazz Hands. When you're making music for old people and uh you know, an album from last year isn't just new. It's basically yesterday. And yeah, exactly. A couple of good songs is uh, way more than enough. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what. That's that's exactly how I felt about it. It's Man, the time I, dilation of the the aging artist. There. I went to the to try to find the merch table, and I found it, and I was the first one to find it. And then the whole band came out to like sign records and stuff, and it just like this this uh multi grammy winning artist who's been playing for literally 50 years was just like behind a card table being like sure I'll sign that it was very very odd oh and here's a, a little extra funny experience uh, that you can try to unpack if it makes sense for you standing in the front of this line there it wasn't a very big line in fact there was a merch guy saying we got CDs we got albums come on come get them the guy behind me was like oh records huh and he's like ooh CDs and then he said sorry I'm still on CD as though records, vinyl records were the new thing and that he's moves. still on CD. And that guy was older than me. I so I, I'm trying to figure that one out still. <laughs> yeah, some people get into specific hobbies uh, a little later than others, I guess. Maybe yeah, he wasn't like, a music collector. Guy if he was, until... if he was 10 years older than me and his parents had any music, it would have been records, you know? So it was, it's like, That's I'm true, not, yeah. not really sure how to, how to how to put that one together but uh sorry i'm still on cd is it's is something that that has been bouncing around my head since that incident so uh now you may have it uh i have some recommendations if you enjoyed this episode of insert credit please rate and review our show wherever and however you can you can also support us on patreon.com slash insert credit to pay the appropriate parties if you'd like to sponsor our show with an advertisement or personal message, uh, you can do that by contacting us at show at insertcredit.com. This episode is edited by Esper Quinn <laughs> with original music by Kurt Feldman. I'm Alex Jaffe. I'm Frank Cifaldi. I'm Tim Rogers. I'm Brandon Sheffield. And let's all go to the pictures. You know, I almost watched that Fallout show. Uh, I was going to watch it this week. Uh, it was on my schedule of stuff to watch. And do you want to know why I didn't? Because why? I put on that Ripley show again and just watched that again. <laughs> That's how good that show is. Best thing I've seen in years.